meeting of April 8th, 2021 to order. Can we have a Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which stands a nation under God, liberty and justice for all. It actually doesn't seem like there's as bad of a lag either. So, uh, next, can I have roll call, please? Ken Nelson. Here. Linda the Gray. Here. Mary Scott. Virginia Higley. Frank Alimo. Here. John Pritchardella. Here. Vinnie Grillo. Um, absent, and Richard Suzak is here. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Grillo did contact me. He will not be able to make this evening's meeting. Uh, moving on, approval of minutes for March 25, uh, 2021. Moved. Motion's made. Is there a second? Second. Any questions, concerns, or alterations? Rich, you good with them? Yeah, yes, I, I did read them real quick and um, I didn't see anything really. Okay, disturbing. great. All, all in favor, say aye, please. Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, it's unanimous. Uh, town attorney's report we received in writing. Does anybody have any questions for the town attorney? Okay, seeing none. Uh, public participation. At this time in the meeting, anybody in the public that would like to speak to the commission about matters related to the town of Enfield that are not on our agenda, please uh, state your name and address for the record. Anyone out there would like to speak to the commission? Okay, seeing none. Bond releases, I don't see any this evening. Is that correct? No bond releases. Thank you, Jen. Uh, moving on, continued public hearings, public hearing 2994. Is there anyone for the applicant here? If so, state your name and address for the record. Um, should I take roll call? Sure. Uh, Ken Nelson. Here. Linda Fred. Here. Uh, Virginia Higley, is she on yet? No. Nope. Uh, Frank Alimo. Here. John Pitchinella. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. Okay, uh, anyone for the applicant present? If so, state your name and address for the record. Um, I'm not sure if I'm should be speaking yet. I just don't know uh, when I should speak or when my thing comes up. Uh, which one are you here for? Uh, Thomas Sattel. I'm, I'm trying to look at the e at the same time doing this to see if there's a number. Or I believe you're next. Oh, okay. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Jen, is there anyone here for the applicant? Is, is this the Labonte? Uh, is this the um, farmer's market? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Excuse me. I'm, I'm Tom Fahey. I'm president. Oh, I thought we we're a second tonight. So uh, we're ready to proceed. OK, great. Um, so. <clears throat> Commissioners, you've seen the text amendments. We received them today. How do you guys interpret? So is it Lori's or Jennifer's that we're looking at? The last one we got? I assume I have both of them here. Yes, that would be Lori, Lori's email that Lori's came out email. later okay. today. Yep. And I guess I'm, I'm looking at it, and, and I do have a question in terms of, you, you know, again, you know, I, I believe that this private farmer's market or farmer's market or whatever, whatever we want to call it is, is really similar to retail. And that what I, I would expect that, you know, when, when it's in table 6.2, it would have the same limitations as retail um, establishments or outlets that are in, allowed in industrial zones as being retail type of, you know, practices. So 
Um, and again, I'm not really sure, you know, looking at, you know, and then table 6.2 industrial district use table and add the following use. And, uh, and when I look at the table for, for Virginia retail outlets, you know, it, it doesn't allow it in I2. And so, so I, I'm thinking that, you know, I'm not sure exactly why it's not allowed in I2, but, you know, if, if previously we didn't allow retail in I2, then, you know, I probably would not be, you know, in favor of allowing retail in I2 this time because of the fact that it was not allowed, you know, previously. Or if we could give some kind of an explanation as to, you know, why, you know, the, that the designation is there for, you know, special permit for I1 and I1M. And it's not allowed in I2. And this is just a site plan review for an IP um, zone. Lori? I'm sorry, I'm still trying to get Jenny in. I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. She is in, okay. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, I wasn't quite listening. No, no, that's okay. No, Rich was asking, why isn't it an allowed use at this time? Uh, the retail? Yeah, in, in terms of, I think that this is more of a retail type of usage right. rather than anything else. So that, you know, whatever we allowed for retail in, in these zones, then it possibly should be mimicking those, you know, requirements as for retail in an in industrial you know, zones. So, so the retail is typically, if it is allowed, it's usually as accessory to the primary uh, business, which this right. would be as well, really. But this is not a straight retail because it is, you know, relative to farmer's market. That is the purpose behind this. So. I Again, you know, a, a you call it what you what you is what you want to in terms of you know a farmer's market a you know an attic sale or you know it, it really doesn't matter you know I think that you know if you're selling something and you're not really producing anything you know realistically you're you're really selling something you know unless you're trading you know obviously you can trade things but that's sort of a bartering and selling type of thing but so but in reality you're really selling something that you know. It, is is a commodity and you're trying to you know somehow trade your particular merchandise for money or some other item so it you know you can call it you know whatever you want it's still retail could i comment on that mr sure. chairman sure yeah the, if i can if you were to look at uh the um the deaf farmers market on a, on a national level and and what um, the planners, American Planners Association, and what most planners that deal with these things say it, is that there's a difference between buying buying a bushel of tomatoes at at Stop and Shop, and then buying them at a farmer's market from from the farmer who farmed them. And most of the reasons that they they have distinct zoning uh, uh, regulations dealing with farmers markets is because they're not regulated the same way as a retail stop and shop is and that's because the farmers uh, one of the benefits of the farmers is that they cut out the middleman they can sell directly to the end user and if if you look at the regulation the majority of the uh, goods at these at uh, this farmer in the, this regulation have to be farm products therefore the majority of the use is not retail, it's directly from grower to the end user cutting out the middleman. That's probably why, <clears throat> so I, I, I differ with you on and the general, uh, you generalizing this as a total retail operation. If you wanna make the distinction that the person that made jelly or eggs or something like that, even then the eggs there are, are a farmer's product sold not at stop and shop, but through here. Now, the, the, if someone who did a work of art, if you want to call that retail, then you know, be my guest. But I don't think it. I don't think it was intended to be regulated like a stop and shop as a retail product. Uh, and retail outlets are totally different, as we determined last time. 
So that's why um, <clears throat> if you look at that chart. And the other thing is we went out of our way to specify in this regulation that you, the people that are sitting there tonight, have the regulation. This is just a chance to get it back. When we come back with a special permit, you know, you, you get a shot to examine this much more closely and, and to regulate it closely, but within the context of what this particular regulation provides. We're talking about, you see that the, we took your advice last week, we, we, uh, two weeks ago, we made, we put the maximums in, we limited the numbers of hours of operation per week to something that's very, very small. So, whoops, I lost the video here. So I guess we're still on. Uh, yeah, you put it up on the screen. I see you. So I mean, that that's the explanation. Um, for our purposes, I, our, our property is an industrial one. You know, and I know that you always like to do a regulation that is not specifically generated for one, one person. This isn't because we did amend it to include uh, the uh, outdoor farmer markets on designated parcels of land as well. And, you know, obviously, and it's good planning to have the regulation apply to more than just one situation. So those are the things we tried to include in this. Rich? And, and again, you know, I think that, you know, you, you keep em emphasizing the fact that it's a farmer's market, but in reality, you know, it's, it's if it was strictly farm, a farmer's market and you didn't allow all these other vendors that are selling all kinds of other gizmos, contraptions, or whatever, you know, I would agree with you. But, you know, as soon as you, you know, must start mudding the water in terms of allowing, you know, other vendors to sell their wares, it, it starts getting diluted in terms of, you know, and, and I know you always, it always says has to be, you know, a majority, but, you know, a majority could be 51 or 50% or, you know, just barely a majority. So that in reality, you know, you don't necessarily have, you know, strictly farmers out there selling their wear, but you have all kinds of people selling their wear. So, you know, I, I think that, again, if you wanted to eliminate all those other, you know, vendors, then I would agree with you. Sure. It's a farmer's market. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, you know, we can do whatever you want to do. But as soon as you start including all those other vendors, it's not so black and white. It, it's, it, it gets very gray and, you know. To, to you it might, but that's, that's not what farmers markets are. Farmers market, they're a community thing. They're, the, the effort is to bring the community together, not just to buy the, the grapes and the tomatoes, but the, but to, uh, it's it's a it's a destinational place where people can get together in a town, and 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 and, and more than just sell a. If you don't need these if you just want to go to a roadside stand. That's a different story. This is a whole different experience. It's not it's not meant to just have one bin for tomatoes and one for potatoes. It's meant to be a community experience. That's what you're missing. Uh, and, 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 you know, it's, this is, I, I don't know what you're trying to do this, but it, it, there's no, there's no farmer's markets that don't have these other things. Go to any, go to any of them, including the one, you know, you, you mentioned to yourself last week and the one, the one in Enfield probably has very, I bet you it doesn't have 50% farmer's markets, the one you had to the square. We're putting much more serious limitations on this than you have in the one the town runs. Could I answer? <laughs> sure, go ahead, Rich. You yeah, and, in terms of, you know, and again, you, you say that it's going to be a, you know, is it a, a place of assembly now? So that, you know, it's it's really, you know, more like an auditorium event? Oh, where, ah, you know, that's not even close to what I'm well, saying. Well, again, you're saying, you know, it's where you're going to go and meet people and, you know, conf, you know, and so, you know, yeah, you're going to have a cup of coffee, you're going to buy someone's handcraft, you're going to go through the attorney booth. Attorney Fahey, attorney yeah. Fahey. Yeah, I can't, want have you, okay. I can't have you stepping on the commissioners while they're talking. He gives you time. You need to give him the same. Okay. I, I apologize. We'll do. Go ahead, Rich. Sorry. And and again, like you said, you know, I, I, th I think that, you, you know, you, you're looking at it, you know, not with the broad stroke. You're looking at it as, you know, with, with you know, blinders on or directional, you know, emphasis on things and, and I'm looking at the, the total package as to what the total package is. So looking at the total package is looking is different than looking at the pieces that 
you know, make up the, the total package. So, you know, I, I think that, you know, re regardless of, of, you know, what these little, you know, portions of the total package are, that the total package is, is that, you know, something is being sold and something is being bought. And, you know, regardless of whether we're eliminating, you know, the middleman or not, it, it's still, you know, something's being sold and something's being bought. And, and, and I guess I, I don't see the distinction between that and, you know, retail. And, and you know, and again, you, you could sort of hide behind the fact that, you know, okay, we're, we're allowing farmers to do this. And, and I agree, you know, realistically, there should be a place for the farmers to do that. And, you know, but it, it should not include all these other, you know, auxiliary and, and you know, vendors that, that don't necessarily, you know, fall into the, the agricultural or the farming definition. What are you classifying as auxiliary vendors, Rich? Well, I think that, you know, again, it's, it's the new crafts products, such as wooden furniture, textiles, artwork, you know, and, and all that stuff. And, um, you know, and possibly, you know, well, I, I think that, you know, there are, you know, smoked meats could probably be, you know, agricultural and, and vegetables, canned vegetables and dried fruits and salsa could probably be vegetable, but, or, or agricultural, but it's, it's the, the, you know, the item D that, that they've included. So you're concerned about the craft side of it, you know, wool from sheep, knitting, uh, uh, Afghan or something, or yeah, and, and and what you have to realize is that there's probably more people creating crafts than there are people farming. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you start looking at the big picture, where it's it's easy for somebody to go in his in his you know basement and start making clock faces or you know making little you know rocking chairs or you know creating something you know like that. But but the, the farming aspect of it is is a lot harder because you gotta you know ex expend a lot more time and, and possibly you know have a, you know a larger area that you're you're doing all this you know farming in. So you know I I, I just see it the possibility is is that you know the farmers are going to run out of food, but the people making crafts don't necessarily run out of crafts. See I, I see it that you know especially here in New England. The farmers during the winter months, once their crops are in, they have a long road until they're ready to start um, getting their crops ready. So they do crafts. And, you know, the farmer's market that was on the town green for years and years had crafts and stuff with it. And, you know, if you have sheep, you shave them, you use the wool, you knit things and make blankets. Some of the best Afghans are made that way. So, you know, furniture... Maybe that's now that's where I start to cross over maybe more towards your side of it. Somebody brings in a living room set. They didn't make that on their farm. That's a whole different thing. But if, you know, if somebody makes, um, you know, they make rocking chairs out of um, wicker pieces or branches that you see people do to me, that's the craft. It's, you know, it fits more in the farmer's market. Where else would you sell something like that? Again, I'm, I'm, I don't think that that I'm I'm arguing with the fact that it, you know it it can't be you know within a farmer's market. I'm saying that it it could be within a farmer's market, but it sort of is diluting the definition of what a farmer's market is, and and it's 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 really that dilution of what that definition that st starts getting it kind of a, a vague reference as to really how much farming products are going to be there, and. And, and again, I'm not against farmers. Believe me, I I, I totally support all the farmers, and and I think that you know we we should you know bend over backwards and by right they could do certain things, and and, and that's what I agree with is that, is that the farmers by right could do certain things that other people cannot because they are in harmony with with the lands and you know with what they're trying to achieve. So you know, and 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 I guess. That's what I'm trying to emphasize is that if it was strictly farmers, then then we're not hiding behind anything. There's no skirts. There's nobody behind the curtain or anything. But yeah, as soon as we start introducing all these other vendors, then all of a sudden it's, it's not so black and white that, you know, this is farmers doing the, their 
where and, and they're just trying to survive and and I would I, and I think that you know we should we should bend over backwards for the farmers believe me it, it's it's the other people who are going to try to you know ride on this, the, the coattails of the farmers that you know could you know again is, is what I'm trying to prevent and and I, I'm just trying trying to say if you you know if you haven't you know grown it out of the ground then basically it's not agriculture and 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 I don't know how you change that definition, and and maybe I just have a poor, I I I guess definition of what farmers really do, and and maybe you know I'm confused. But, well, well, and that's I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get on your page, Rich. But I look at like um, Smith's uh, farm where they sell the ice cream. You know, the milk is produced on the farms. But none of the toppings are, none of the cones are. And so, you know, it, it's all party to their ice cream stands. And I mean, let's face it, I believe that that's a huge part of their business that keeps them alive. Trinity Farms, they have the best chocolate milk there is, but they sell honey from farms in Suffield. They sell yogurt from other farms and they have some great products there. Now they are 100% farm related, but not off of their own farm, you know, which it's kind of, I look at it like a co-op, a bunch of farms got together and they sell out of one stand and you get some of the most natural stuff you're going to get. Um, I, I just, I'm not following you either to where you want to make that cross. And, and I think we all need to be on the same page here and I'm trying to understand you know, if somebody were to sell car tires at this farmer's market, I agree with you a thousand percent. If that's as extreme, and I'm using very extreme, but if that's what you're leaning towards with what you're saying. Well, well, the thing is, you know, I, I and again, I think once we allow this thing, you know, we're not going to turn back and, and start start putting limitations on it. So, right. so I, I mean, that's why we should have the discussion now that, you know, specifically, you know, if you know, if unless we start saying you can't have this, you can't have this, you can't have that, it, it it's more or less implied that it, it's supplemental to whatever anybody else is selling because somebody acquired it and somebody's trying to sell it. And regardless of whether it's it's organic or not, you know, it, it's being you know offered for trade or retail or you know or something along those lines so um so yeah and again i'm not you know the thing is i'm, I'm just saying that you know if, if we follow the, the guidelines that we have in our present regulations for this you know line item then then it falls right into place with with everything else that we in, 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 had anticipated for the these you know uses and 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 as long as that's what the intent of this, I guess, table that we got last minute, you know, is, you know, like you said, I can't see it in a table. I can see it in writing. So, yeah, I'm just trying to compare the two and saying, well, the table shows this. And it, is this really a re reflection of what the table is that we have there? And if it is, then I'm fine. If it's not, then it should reflect the, what the table shows. Mr. Chairman, go ahead. Mr. Chairman, go ahead. Chip Labonte, I'm the applicant. I was wondering if I could just speak for a moment. Sure. Okay. Um, so historically, you know, I think like as um, as you guys were talking, I was thinking about market days in maybe like the colonial time where people actually brought their crops in and it was a gathering. Um, and so there's a little bit of that social aspect of it where people come in and they do see their friends and I don't want to be too corny about it, but you know, they come in off the farm and they have coffee or, and they, they get to see other people. So in that regard, um, I think that what Tom Fahey is saying about a social experience is, is true. And so like to give a little bit of flavor to this, and I, I totally appreciate, well, first, first of all, one thing that we've been talking about um, is that in order for this to be successful as an economic entity, it has to be interesting. If it's boring um, in terms of selling used items, um, used tires, used baseball cards, people aren't going to be interested. We want people to come back regularly, and therefore it has to be interesting. And to that end, the sort of things that we're talking about, you know, might be, you know, chocolate, coffee, um, fish, 
uh, wood carving. Am I interested in having a farmer's market that sells furniture? Absolutely not. I mean, it's the sort of thing what I'm looking for is whether you're taking your young children or your young or your grandchildren to something like this and having a great experience because, you know, there is uh, candy and chocolate and baked goods and the like. And that's what's fun about it. Um, and that's all that we're just, you know, something about creating an experience and, you know, is there going to be, and we certainly want to have a nice combination of stuff that comes from a farm um, as well as being, as well as having fresh fish, um, but also stuff that is in effect produced, i.e. honey. You know, I would love to have all of March be maple syrup month. Um, and those are the sorts of things that's like, that's, that's what we're trying to get to. Okay, Jeff, Jen, I, oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me, when Jen has her hand up. She may have something to add in. Go ahead, Jen. Um, I was just, uh, I was Jen, just curious. No, 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 not Jenny, Jen. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yep. If you've got something to say, Jenny, please just put your hand up. Go ahead, Jen. I can't, I'm on my telephone. Okay, all right. Go ahead, Jen, sorry. Um, so I just wanted, I guess, to say that um, in the earlier version that was sent out today, this morning from um, of the regulations didn't have that letter D in it. That sort of came from a discussion with staff where we had understood that maybe the commission might be open to having some sort of craft as part of a farmer's market. Um, that said, maybe we can tweak letter D to um, be something more aligned with what uh, Commissioner Suzak is, is looking for, like maybe saying something along the lines of handcrafted goods or um, maybe something. And, and if, if what you're worried about is a flea market, maybe we can take out the part about wooden furniture. Just, um, I mean, those are just options that I had um, that I, I had been thinking of. Um, so. Thanks, Jen. Rich? Yep. And, and again, I'm not I'm not against them selling furniture. I'm not against them. You know, the, one of the, the best purchases that I made was at our town green, and, and I bought some finger puppets for my grandson, and, and they were knitted. And 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 I'm I'm like all for this whimsical stuff. Believe me, you know I'm not against it. You know, I I enjoy looking at you know how creative people get, and 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 it gives you a, a lot of ideas of how you might want to furnish your house. So you know, like you said, I'm not against this retail. I'm not against the mixed retail. It's just just that retail is retail is retail, and 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 I and I think that you know giving them as as much flexibility as possible. You know, don't hide behind something that possibly you know, might not necessarily give you, you know, the, the best that you can possibly achieve. You know, it, it, if if it turns out that, you know, you're going to do a lot better selling these finger puppets, you know, like you said, I'd, I'd be the first one there to buy some. So, you know, so it, it's that kind of thing where I, I just want to make sure that, that the definition fits what we're trying to achieve. And if we're trying to achieve flexibility, if we're trying to achieve, you know, maximum, you know, potential for what's what's going to be there, you know, let's not try to limit it to, you know, a, a certain seek, you know, little, you know, placeholders, you know, but give them as, as much flexibility as possible. But but in my mind, it, it's still retail. You know, I, I can't get that out of my, you know, it, 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 and, and I grant that the, the farmers. You know, find might find it more difficult to, to leave their farms, and because of the fact that they have to do all this preparation work and, and you know the nurturing of, of all their vegetables and everything else, so they don't have as much free time as possibly some of these other you know vendors would have. But but you know it, it's you know and again you know and like you said I, you know I'll, I'll just generally go with whatever the commission wants to go, whatever direction. But I'm I'm just pointing out that you know it, it's. You know, there are certain, you know, things that have been established by our predecessors, 
and what I don't want to do is necessarily, you know, not necessarily follow down their path only because I'm not really sure of all the different permutations that could occur. So somewhere something could have happened where somebody made a decision that, you know, this is the, for the best interest of the town would be this. And 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 if we know why something happened, then, you know, we, we could make a decision as to, you know, how to, why, you know, if we modify it, is it going to, you know, not necessarily, you know, go back to whatever they were trying to prevent. So, thanks, Rich. Tom, Tom did you want to say something? Yes, I would like to. Um, no. First of all, um, Mr. Swayzak has um, used the word hiding about three or four times tonight. We're not trying to hide anything. If we were, we wouldn't have put the crafts in there to begin with. Uh, what we tried to do to was, was to address all the comments that were made at the last meeting. There, there was a lot, and the one thing you can't do is to name every single pot potential product, whether it's a farm product, a value added product, or a craft product you can put in there. But I'll tell you this, let's not lose sight of what, what the whole point of it. We're talking about industrial zones. We're talking about an effort to put obsolete, empty uh, buildings to use with, a, with something that has the capacity to have a real first class farmer's <coughs> market during months when farmers are, do have time on their hand. We're talking about the fall after harvest, the, the winter and the spring, and 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 to and to have and to, to, to have a you know a, a, this is not something that Mr. Labonte dreamed up overnight. He's been and spent a lot of time researching and been to them. And these are the types of products I have. And by the way, to make this successful, to make an empty building successful, you have to have these products. If you're just going to limit it to, like I say, corn and, and um, cabbage and things like that, like a roadside stand, putting it in, saying it makes no sense. This is to, to this is intended to be a successful market with with a considerable number of vendors because they have the capacity to do it and to put this building to use, so so that it can be productive. And this this is what the regulation will enable. Nobody's trying to hide hide anything. And I, I, you know, I don't, I don't think I personally and respectfully disagree with all this discussion about retail and whatnot. You got to make your own decision on that. But if you look at, if you read, read up on these things, you'll see that the effort is to go directly from the farmer. On the, and the, remember again, majority of the products are farmer produced, the actual product. Uh, and and uh, you know, and, and I think that's your protection. Plus, you, he also mentioned as of right. Would love it to be an as of right use. But your uh, your chart makes it a special permit use. We're willing to, to and the applicants willing to ex expose themselves to the expense of going through the special permit process, and to, to give you the opportunity to scrutinize this at a much higher level than it would be if, if it was an as of right use. So hopefully um, you'll think that the language that we've included. And by the way, the word new products new products was put in there specifically so that any craft has to be new. It can't be a flea market, flea market type product. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Ginny, go ahead. Well, I apologize. I didn't get in on the first part. So if this has already been covered, Ken, just tell me. Um, I had uh, a question on the 35 or 36 weeks. I thought it would be much more appropriate to have it by month, say May to December, and then go on because otherwise, you could have it for 35 or 36 weeks, stop a week, and then go right back to another 35 or 36 weeks. That was just my only concern. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Mm -hmm. um, as, as far as Jenny's comments, I, I'm not into limiting uh, the use of this building. If they can maintain the use of the building throughout the year, I, I think that's beneficial to them and the community as a whole. I, I, I just vision a farmer's market. You know, one day you show up, there's a piece of farm equipment out there that all the little kids get to see it. And, you know, what is that for, Dad? And, you know, and, and you make something out of this. I understand what Mr. Labonte is saying. Um, as far as the retail side of things, one of the residents addressed us last meeting, and he said that in the building across from you, there's a furniture place that works out of there, and they have a bargain bin or a bargain buy over there where you could buy damaged 
goods. Is that correct? Do you know, Chip? I honestly don't. Um, I've never been over there. They're, I guess, just a tenant. Um, I, I have no idea what they, I, I, I have honestly no idea. Okay. Because if that was true, what I was leaning towards is that's, that's definitely a retail use. Um, but we don't know. So um, I will move on. Lynn, uh, Commissioner DeGray. And just one thing, because we all keep talking about just this one building. This tax change will affect all industrial plants. So we're always looking at Manning Road specifically because this is the uh, gentleman who brought it Virginia to us. Hickley. But we also have to look that there are other places that are exiting. closer to farms. So this may be the, a big benefit to them. Uh, and, you know, this is just the only place it's going to be. Thank you, Commissioner DeGray. Commissioner Alimo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm where I was at the first meeting. Um, <clears throat> I, I like this. And, um, you know, like I said the first time around, that we're looking at a text change. And I was looking forward to um, the special use permit part of this process to, uh, you know, get some more regulations in or address people's concerns. I think it's um, good for the neighborhood. Uh, I think it's good quality of life uh, use for the public in general. Um, it's definitely going to reduce um, the activity that was there, you know, back in the day when Hallmark was going. Uh, it is an industrial zone, so I mean, I, I think what you described it as a it could be a right to use. Somebody was using that term just now. So if Mr. Labonte should be successful enough to get an industrial um, tenant right to use. Maybe they don't even come before us and we bring it back to 500 cars a day. Just saying, I mean, that's the other side of it. I personally like this. I think the residents will like it again. And then when we go to the special use process and permitting, um, we can get concerns from public safety and the, the fire, police, EMS uh, building and all those uh, relative uh, departments to help us along the course. So I'm where I was two weeks ago. I think I called it a, a second bite at the apple. And uh, that's where I am. And thank you, Mr. Chairman. Appreciate it. Thank you, Commissioner Limo. Uh, go ahead, Lori. Hi. Um, I was just going to say about the 36 weeks. That's for you know per uh, year, so per fiscal year. So if they want to have 36 weeks in the summertime, they could do that, or they could have 36 weeks in the winter time. So. Um, if, if you notice, this is not just as as Mr. Gray was explaining. This is not just for this building or this site, and um, it also might be a designated outdoor area. So, and we have to remember that this is all encompassing. And you know, as far as the retail aspect of this, it is <coughs> uh, accessory to a primary uh, industrial use. I mean, it 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 is absolutely secondary. And if, if they are selling second or whatever it is across the street, again, it's a secondary operation. It's not something where, you know, the whole world is coming in to, to you know, like a Walmart to shop for every little thing that they use at home. So that's and, my little comment. And, and you're okay with putting a restriction on the amount of weeks they can operate? I just... I, we never do that on any business. Why would we do it on this business? If this gentleman can find something to fill his building 12 months a year, he ought to have the power to do that under the farmer's market. I, I tend to agree, but um, I think that the, I think the commission as a whole was kind of worried about having this come, you know, 52 weeks a year. And I think that the applicant chose to restrict it for that reason. I'm sure that they'd be more than happy to have it unrestricted. Mr. Chairman, I, I can comment on that, and Chip is here to, to confirm it. But I, Matt, Lori's right. We we looked at what the commission said. There were a number of comments about how much, how long it was going to operate, how many hours it was going to operate. And quite frankly, Chip wants to put the building to use. Would love to have no restriction on on the, um, uh, the number of weeks we're operating. But we're willing. This is what we're. This is 
in, in, in some ways, this is what we're willing to do to get this thing going. Mm -hmm. And anything you can do to help us out, you know, whether it's as to the number of hours we can operate or the number of uh, uh, weeks, would be grateful. But Chip's willing to even do it with this minimal. Am I right, Chip? Yes, thank you. And um, so I guess when I bought my building, I didn't fully understand the hallmark effect in terms of them having vacated the property and the residents becoming sort of used to the new normal of uh, no traffic in my building. And so in, in facing this, really, what I'll, all I want to do is get the darn thing approved. I don't need to do it in the summer. I would just as soon not try to compete with summer outdoor farmers markets. It's more fun outside. I want to, uh, you know, put my building to use, and I think we can do it successfully with just two days a week and outside of the summer months. And frankly, I'd like to take the summer off. <laughs> okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Go Petronella. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as far as the retail aspect that Commissioner uh, Suzak was was referring to, I mean, even a roadside farmer stand is considered retail. That's effectively that's that's what they're doing. Uh, and and in a farmer's roadside stand, they're typically not selling what they're growing on the property. Uh, they have other. They're selling peaches and other fruits and vegetables that are uh, that, that they buy and so forth. Uh, uh, so I, I don't I don't see this as a problem. I, I think the applicant uh, did a pretty good job uh, uh, with this revision, and and I think he's got restrictions on it as well. It, it, it's basically provided he says provided the total number of value added vendors and crop vendors does not comprise a majority of the vendors. So he's he's putting in a, a safeguard for restrictions of. Uh, of ancillary products uh, call it uh, so I, I think I think that that's pretty good coverage on that that I'm satisfied with uh, and I, I really feel that some of that ancillary uh, those products uh, add diversity where it, it, it can help attract more people uh, and and promote the, the the farmer aspect of it as well so I think it's good for all where it's just not all farmer product uh, farm products uh, Basically, so um, and and as uh, uh, Commissioner Alimo had said, I, I think you know I, I don't have a problem with this uh, because I I think it's I think it'd be good for the neighborhood. It'd be less impact traffic wise uh, and so forth. Uh, and you know certainly uh, uh, appreciate the fact that he's got in a maximum of ten hours per week of being open in, in only thirty six weeks. Now ten hours a week at twice a week. Uh, that doesn't amount to a whole lot. So I think he's been pretty uh, darn conservative with that. So with all of that, I, I, I certainly can support this application. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner Petronella. Um, uh, again, I would just hope he's not limiting his hours to 10 hours a week to so many weeks a year because that's the, in, the impression he's getting from this commission. He needs to do that to get this to pass because I'm I'm not good with that. You know, if that's if that's what you want to do, you want to take summers off, that's great. But if you think that that's how I feel, that is not how I feel. It's your building and if you can make a success out of this for 52 weeks a year, all the power to you. If you're in Florida for the summers and somebody else is running the operation out of the building and you can keep it farm related, I want to give you that opportunity and not tie your hands. So um, I, I, I don't, I don't know any other business that we've really regulated this much. It's a farmer's market and, you know, people work during the week. So, you know, Monday through Friday is going to be very limited to what you could do anyways, but who knows, you know, Christmas, a Christmas craft fair with stuff made on the farm, you know, things happen and, I just want to give you that opportunity there, keeping it along the same lines. Um, so, I mean, I'm asking you, 52 weeks a year, or do you want to stay with the 35? Because now's the time to get it approved with the commission instead of somebody shutting you down in February because that's your 35 weeks is up. 
Well, I expected to deal with this at the uh, special permit level um, because this actually, I think the way that this works, we might not necessarily, we might actually have July days um, if we say we operated three weeks a month um, or let's say Christmas fell on a Sunday and therefore we weren't open and we might, you know, do another day to supplement on another 4th of July. So I think there that I'm totally good with it. And if I were to, um, if it was uh, okay with the special permit that I worked some, uh, some warmer days in there, great. This is part of my building. It's not the whole building. I've had I've owned the building for 10 years and I've never had 100% occupancy. I've always had a third of it filled and so I'm not this, but in so I think it's a nice use that's a that is consistent with a residential area. And to that end, you know, I can definitely make it work in 36 weeks. Right. And and I I understand you're leaning towards a special permit, which I understand. But what we're doing now kind of overrides the special permit aspect of it. Right. You understand that? Yep. Okay. All right, that's all. I just wanted to give you that opportunity. So, Commissioner Alimo, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to go along and say I agree with uh, what your statement just was and what you had said about the time and um, the fact of uh, he might he might have gotten that impression from last uh, meeting. You know, I reviewed the meeting in the minutes and the audio, and I think we spent an hour and forty minutes discussing this application. So. I was thinking the same thing that he might have gotten it from from our discussion, but I feel like you. And if the applicant wants to keep it the way it is, that's fine. If he wants to go extend it, I'm good with that as well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. OK, seeing no other commissioners, uh, Jenny, did you want to say anything? Because I can't see your hand. Oh, are you on your computer now? You're muted. Sorry, I'm fine. Um, thank you for asking. Though. OK. All right, um, Attorney Fahey, you good before I open it up to the public? Yeah, I think we've. Uh, I'm good for now. I reserve a right to uh, respond to any comments. Absolutely. From right, yep. thank you. Chip, you're good? Yes, thank you. Okay. At this time, is there anybody out there who would like to speak in favor or against public hearing 2994, the text amendment application to section 6.20.1 footnote 7 to allow private farmers markets in industrial zones? If so, please speak up and state your name and address for the record going for the first time. Anyone? Going for the second time. Mr. Going. Mr. Chairman? Yes, ma'am. Um, there's a there is a participant that called in and there was some background noise and I muted them yeah. and I can't unmute them. So if you are 860-212-2586, you might want to call back in. Okay. I, I, I don't know why it's not letting me unmute. Fred Muller. Okay. I'll He's open it back exiting. up in a minute to the public. So going for the third time, anyone in favor or against public hearing 2994? If so, state your name and address for the record. Okay, seeing none. Um, I just, I to the commission, my concern about the limiting of the time is we're not talking about Mr. Labonte's building. We're talking about a change in industrial zones, which affects all owners throughout these buildings. So it may work for him, but we have never limited somebody on days they can work. You know, um, so I, I just, I, this is very selective for this particular use, which we're not dealing with this particular use. We're dealing with industrial zones right now. I mean, really, Mr. Labonte has nothing to do with this or his building. This is for the town of Enfield. And I'm just, I don't think that we should put that restriction on it. I mean, we could restrict hours of operations for farmer's market, 
in industrial zones. We could do that, but to res restrict it to 35 weeks, 10 hours a week, I, I've never heard of anybody doing that. And I just don't want to start something that isn't right. Commissioner Suzak. You're muted, Rich. You're muted, Rich. I'm finding. Okay, there. It's just that my mute button's in a different location. I just talked to track it down. No, I, I definitely agree with you, Mr. Chair. And is now joining. You know, the only thing that that I, I'm struggling with is I know that you know the the you know the, the residents on Manning Road are going to be affected by you know this text change and that you know there was some reservation as to you know how many of those residents really understood what the text change meant and you know there was some discussion that you know there was letters of support and and that you know all of a sudden some of the you know the people that were supporting it once they realized what was going on they says no no wait 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 we don't you know we we're we're happy the way it is we don't necessarily want to go back to what we had before so um in, in that vein i have sort of a conflict as to you know, what, you know, how much burden could we put on those residents? And and I totally agree with you in terms of, you know, it, it, it you know, we, we should not be limiting other possible events that might occur somewhere else by what this particular, you know, gentleman wants to do. And that, you know, if we, if he wants to restrict his, his usage to a certain period of time, then because of the fact that the, you know the, it would benefit the residents, then then it would be so much easier to approve that type of special permit, you know, recognizing that he's he's, you know, recognizing the fact that you know it it could impact the you know the residents that are right there, but you know in the other zones where there there is no impact on you know res residents, then you know. It, they could operate 40 hours a week, you know, for 52 weeks of the year, and, and I don't really care. So, you know, in that sense, I would definitely agree with you. But, you know, looking at, you know, where this might come up the first time, you know, you would hope hope that, you know, the applicant <clears throat> realize that, you know, although it says this, you know, it, it's really meant for the entire town and, and that it would be to his benefit that, you know, he has a little bit of restriction. And, and but you know but again recognizing that you know if he sells it and somebody else comes in then all of a sudden you know they have freelance as, as to what the regulations say so um it's a double-edged sword in terms of you know we don't want to restrict it but you know we we know where it will have more or less an immediate impact and and how do we you know minimize that impact it's going to have you know on to, to, to residents so the special but, but I, and again, I agree with you because because the only other thing that I, I want to you know, point out is that it, it's no longer a text amendment that includes footnote seven. It's going to be a text amendment that is reflects the, um, I, I guess the the draft draft resolution that we received today. So you know, so it, it, it's it's going to be something different than that you know footnote number seven. Right. So uh, what I was what I was leaning towards, Rich, is. Like I said, if we forget about Mr. Labonte and we forget about Manning Road right now, because that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the text change. No, or we just keep it, you know, they 52 weeks a year, no limitations. But when the special permits come in front of us, Mr. Labonte has made it clear he doesn't want to work seven days a week in this building doing this. You know, part of his application could be to sell it to the residents because now you're specific to the site. He can say, look, I only want to do this 35 weeks, you know, 10 hours a week. Now it makes it exclusive for his property, and we're not tying the hands of the remaining industrial buildings. Mr. Chairman? Go ahead, Attorney Fahey. Yeah, thank you. You know what? That, that, you, you know, you're correct. And um, we were, I, we kind of discussed this a little bit at the last meeting, but technically speaking, Section A under 6.309 is is really a special permit condition mm -hmm. so that if, if you if you're interested in doing that the simplest thing to do would be to eliminate a and then insert it when you if you were to review our special permit and grant it you would insert it there right and then you have something that you know if you had some someone else with the two or three other properties that wanted to do this industrial in the industrial wanted zone or whatever 
then they they might come in and they they want men want different hours or it might be more appropriate for them in different hours. Right. But we know what we're dealing with and Chip knows what he's wants to do for purposes of this and knows the past history and whatnot. And in, in, in no way, obviously, with <laughs> ten hours a week compared to the Hallmark situation, as you all know. But but um, obviously that's you know uh, he's got it on record and that's the appropriate place because there were you know you've got to review the whole thing. Yep. Uh, and go through all your list of special permit considerations, and that's yep. one there. You can plug it in and be right in the condition, and that's the way it would stay unless he unless he come back someday to try to amend it, which you wouldn't have to do. Right. But this way here, that solves your problem of what about someone else who's in a different zone and doesn't have a residential district next door and all that other consideration. Right. Right. Now, how do you, how does the commission feel about removing A? And because because. Like I said, that's more of the special permit because now we're site specific. And I think Mr. Labonte has made it very clear what his intent is on this building, which is as minimal as you could possibly expect. Um, I heard the neighbors. I understand the neighbors' concerns. But I believe there's actually two neighbors on that street that are original homeowners that lived there before Hallmark was built. The rest of them have all bought the houses after that building was there. And, you know, when you buy a house down the road from an industrial building, you've got to expect some traffic. Now, he has had very minimal traffic for the last several years, which is great for the neighbors, but that's not real. That is not real at all. He has a building back there. It's zoned industrial. And uh, I just don't see this as high traffic and you know this is irrelevant for this but when it comes to the site plan and i think that's what he's trying to do is get it across this isn't seven days a week 24 hours a day what he's trying to do there and we address that at the site plan time so that's where i'm leaning i'm in favor um with removing a the restrictions and we can move it to the site plan and make it all site specific when we go over it, because if there isn't a residential zone, it doesn't matter how many hours a day they operate. I'm for it. Go, Chip, you have your hand up. Uh, you kindly addressed all my points. I should take my hand down, I guess. <laughs> um, Sorry about that. Yeah, um, no, I'm thrilled with, the, with, um, with your attitude, and I totally agree there. I don't want to be restrictive, and I'm just trying to get the, uh, you know, to get a use approved. And um, I was, I guess, the thing there that I was thinking of is the last time that we were talking about this two weeks ago, there was a question about maximums, and I think that's all we were trying to get to in this, yeah. um, it, um, today. I understand. Okay, thank you. Um, commissioners, I want to hear your input on removing the restrictions before I open it to the public. I'm good John, with it. Uh, I'm good with, good with it. it. John's good with it. Um, I'm Linda? good with it. Jenny's good. I'm Linda? I'm good. I'm good. <clears throat> okay, so the commission's good. So I want to be clear when I open this to the public, the commission is going to vote on this application with no restrictions. And we're not talking about Manning Road right now. We're talking about changing the text for industrial zones so it could be a property on South Road. It could be a property on Route 5. Chip has, what's the matter, Rich? Not South Road, that's where I live. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so Mr. Labonte will have to come back for a special permit to get this approved but this allows him, along with all other industrial zones, to come in for a special permit. And at that time, we will address the location of the specific building and what surrounds it. And that's where you would have um, your chance to speak in favor or against a particular location. So I'm trying to make this clear to the people who are watching or who want to speak so they know exactly what we're talking about and what we'd be moving forward to vote on. So, uh, Attorney Fahey, you good? Yes, I'm fine. Uh, Mr. Labonte, you're good? Yes, thank you. Commissioners, before I open it to the public, are you good? Good. I don't see any good. hands. 
Okay, at this time, I'd like to open public hearing 2994 up to the public. Um, anyone who wants to speak in favor or against this text amendment application, please speak up and state your name and address for the record going for the first time. Going for the second time. Hello. Hello. Yes, uh, I'm having a hard time. I was trying to get on earlier, so. I That's fine. You state your name and address yeah. for the record, please. My name is Fred Muller, 8 Manning Road, Enfield, Connecticut. Welcome. Yeah, I mean, the way this is all going down and the way you guys are changing this and reinventing the wheel here, it's getting real confusing to figure out what's really going on. Um, I understand that you guys are trying to make this guy have a profitable building. And the bottom, I mean, he had made a comment that he's going to allocate 12 to 15,000 square foot for this last uh, week or whatever. He's got 200,000 square feet left to fill. What's he plan on doing with the rest of this property? This is just one aspect of what he's going to do there. You guys are, I understand this is not site specific, but he's the applicant coming to change this rule that affects the whole town of Enfield. Um, it is site specific. You guys can go around in circles with words and all these things. It's site specific. Um, so like I just said, he's got 15,000 square feet that he's allocating for this. We can grow to whatever. I mean, you guys do now, you don't want to put restrictions on how long it can go, how many days it can be. And you made the comment too, that, you know, this is only going to be on the weekend. Well, you guys all have your weekend that you work during the week and then you can enjoy your weekend. My weekend won't be enjoyed no more. Because now you got traffic coming down Manning Road, unlimited. This is what you guys are not understanding. This is affecting us. And as far as these people moving in onto the street, for years, the people that lived here that didn't just move into the street, we're fighting this. There was supposed to be a road built between Brainerd School and the Waterworks to bring the traffic down there to get it off the Manning Road. That's what needs to happen here. The town of Enfield has collected tax dollars off of these properties and that property, millions and millions of dollars over the years that benefited this whole entire town. And it did not get returned to this area. It got returned to everywhere in this town. And then you guys are leaving us to hold the bag again. This is ridiculous. It's been going on for 60 years. You got an opportunity to get that property that the waterworks was trying to get the town for a dollar. You've already got a section of land that's available for the street that the town of Enfield took from Brainerd Road's property, a uh, Brainerd School's property, for a road. Get a road built. Get it off of Manning Road. Put a cul de sac after 21, 23 Manning Road. Cut off this traffic. You can have an access road. You can have a gate or something so the fire department can get through there if they have to, that they can have a key to a fence at the end of that cul de sac and make a new road. And then you won't have the problem of the people on the street complaining about this because that's the problem. You guys are not taking into effect uh, account what is going to happen on this street again. I don't care if it's Hallmark cards. I don't care if it's a farmer's market painted with all these different colors on. It's more hindrance on us. These people that moved in, like I had stayed the last meeting, there's people that moved on this street less than three years ago. And they're one of the applicants or one of the people that, there were six letters that were returned. Out of those six letters, there's only two residents that have been here for over 15 years. There's two residents that were here for a while that returned the letters that have been here for 30 years. So those two people that said, no, we're not for this, and the four that said they are for it, two of them are, are new neighbors to this area. They don't understand because, like you just said, the, the traffic, like Kenny, on this street has been reduced because a homework cards has been pulled out of here. This man's been here for 10 years. But there's three, there's two other buildings down here. It's not just him. And when you've got another 185,000 square feet that he's going to try to fill with something else, this is just one piece of the apple. So, I mean, I could go around and around. It's just that this is ridiculous that we are still dealing with this after 60 years, after the town of Enfield has collected all this money, 
based off of these properties, and you guys just keep throwing it in our laps to deal with. I mean, let's get, I know, you know, town of Enfield don't build roads. Well, guess what? Maybe you should. This is something that needs to be corrected, and there's your opportunity. The person at Nine Minute Road is selling her property right now that owns the remaining part of that land that they would have to acquire some from. He's got seven acres of land there. He can't use it at all. He hasn't been able to use it for the last 55 years. It was his uncle's. It was Eddie Flaginski's property. Now it was David Flaginski's property, his nephew. This man just died two years ago. Now his wife is selling his property because she can't stay there no more. There's land available that could be bought off that seven acres of land that would get you the remainder access road through these woods and get off of any road. Now, you're, now you could do whatever you want. But I know there's three property owners that are not going to come to terms that they have to spend money to build this road because the town of Enfield don't want to do it. Nobody wants to take ownership for this, but you keep throwing it in our lap. And you could say, oh, there's only two residents left out. There's three residents that are original uh, residents that own properties on this street still. I know this whole area. I know everybody that's been on this street. I know the whole history more than anybody. And I'm telling you right now, this town allows things to go on. Every time you turn around, they were coming and doing these secret meetings and having these things done. There was no YouTube. There was no internet. You didn't know what was going on. There was, and they actually had these properties. We need to stay specific. We need to stay on focus of the industrial text amendment change. You're way I off that. now. I understand that, but the text amendment change, right? It's for the whole entire town, and this is just a stepping stone that this man has to take to get to the next level. I understand that. And but that's the point. You guys are going to allow this stuff to happen, and then it's going to turn around, and then the special use permit is going to come, and then those are going to get approved too, and we're going to be back to square one. You don't want to restrict the days. You want to make the fifty-two weeks a year. You want to make it whatever it is. Whatever this man's going to make the most money and do the best he can do with it is what's going to happen here, and we're going to be left holding the bag again. So. Again, like I said before, I'll leave it at that. I heard, said my piece. I don't know what else I could say to you guys to make you understand. This is not. This is my life. This is the rest of my life, and it's been my life for almost sixty years. You guys don't live on this street. You don't have an idea what this is like and what it's been like. And you're only going to do is put it back into my life more and more and more. Build a road. Get the town of Enfield to do what they need to do and build that road and be done with this. It's simple. You put a cul-de-sac at the last house at 23 Manning Road. You put a fence at the edge of that cul-de-sac where the road can continue. You open the gate. The fire department can go through. The police department is an emergency. You have that other access road that's available. All right. To you've, already, you've already covered this. You've already covered this. Yeah. All right. Do you have anything new you want to add? I don't know what else I can add. I mean, that's my argument to this. I mean, maybe I sound like I'm rambling, but the, the, the point is, is, this is very distressing to myself and my family and members of this, of this town. I mean, the members of the street that I know that have a clue what goes on and what's gone on in this street. And until you live here, you have no idea what this has been like and what it's going to become. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Going for the second time. Anybody who would like to speak in favor or against public hearing 2994, state your name and address for the record. And going for the third time in favor against 2994. Okay, seeing none, how would the commission like to proceed? Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we co close public hearing 2994. Motion's made. Is there a second? Second. Motion's made and seconded. Roll call, please. Ken Nelson. Four. Linda DeGray. Four. Virginia Higling. She said four. Frank Alimo. Yeah, four. four. John Petronella. Four. And Richard Suzak is four. Okay, all in favor. How would the commission like to proceed? Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we approve the draft text amendment change that was issued today, um, April 8th, 2021. 
um, as prepared by the planning department to amend section 2-30 definitions to include fire mar markets to amend table 6.20 to add a special line item of farm markets with a special permit uh, designation for districts number one and num I2, I1 and I2 um, to reflect that special permits are required and to amend section, you know, three or to add section uh, three point or 6.30.9 farmers market that includes um, the paragraphs that were issued in our draft, right, uh, I, I guess, amendment, text amendment, um, eliminating paragraph A, uh, limiting the hours of operation and days of operation. Motion is made. Is there a second? Second. Motion is made and seconded. Um, seeing no questions. You, roll call, you, please. You, you know, I, I, again, I just wanted to make a comment that, you, you know, I, I think that, you know, we do have the opportunity to, you know, restrict possibly not as much as possible, you know, certain areas that might be influenced, you know, greater than other areas and and that we haven't lost sight of, of that for, you know, the benefit of the residents is, is that, you know, what we're trying to do is, is move forward to improve the entire town, recognizing that, you know, we can't fix all the sins of our forefathers and that we have to sort of move forward towards, a, you know, a certain re regulation that that makes sense to, you know, the entire town. So, you know, I just want to add that as, as the reason why, you know, I think that we should go forward with this. And, and I think he has made due diligence drastically um, stating his hours of operation that will come up at the site specific um, application when he applies. Uh, he's heard from the residents as we have, and I think that the gentleman's comments would be um, better suited at that special permit, and uh, we will take it into consideration at that point. So seeing no other count comments, roll call, please. Ken Nelson. Four. Linda DeGray. Four. Virginia Higley. Four. Frank Alimo. Four. John Petronella. Four. And Richard Suzak is for. All in favor, none against. Congratulations, and we look forward to seeing you on your special permit. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much. Have a great night. Thank you. You too. Okay, moving on. Uh, new public hearings. Public hearing 3008 Parkey Drive. Roll call, please. Ken Nelson. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Frank Alimo. Here. John Petronella. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. The Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission <clears throat> will hold a public hearing at their next regular meeting on Thursday, <clears throat> April 8, 2021 <throat> at 7 p.m. online concerning the following application. Public hearing 3008 Parky Drive exiting. special permit and site plan review application to expand a non-conforming residential structure to accommodate a larger garage. Thomas Sattel applicant, Thomas and Cindy Sattel owners, R33 zone, map 52, lot 131. Thank you. Is there anyone here for the applicant? If so, state your name and address for the record, please. You're muted, sir. Thomas Sattel, 8 Parky Drive. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, tell us a little bit about what you'd like to do. Um, due to a uh, zoning change in the past, uh, our entire neighborhood is non-conforming, and I'm just trying to put an addition on the garage that won't make it any more non-conforming as I'm maintaining the current front yard setback. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Jan and Lori, I assume this is just like the Burnham and all the other ones that have come before us. He's another victim of this regulation change. That yeah, would be true. that would be correct. And I, uh, um, there wasn't any uh, department comments in the staff report, but we did receive comments from everyone this week, and nobody had anything to say. Okay, commissioners, any questions before I open it to the public? 
Okay, at this time, I'd like to open to the public public hearing number 3008, uh, 8 Parky Drive, a special permit to expand a garage. Um, this is for um, something that happened years ago and they changed it. And now all the homes on the street currently are non-conforming. They're too close to the road, which prevents the expansion. And we are in the process of changing the regulations to make it right. So um, if you have, would like to speak in favor or against this application, please state your name and address for the record going for the first time. Going for the second time. And going for the third time. Okay, seeing none, how would the commission like to proceed? Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we close public hearing 3000. Motion Second. is made. Seconded by Commissioner DeGray. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? It's unanimous. How would you like to proceed? Mr. Chair, I'll move for the approval of the resolution to approve public hearing 3000 dated April 8th, 2021, as prepared by the Planning Department with the 14 conditions listed, and there are no site specific conditions. Thank you. Motion second. is made. Is there a second? And seconded by Commissioner DeGray. Roll call, please. Ken Nelson. Four. Linda DeGray. Uh, four. Virginia Hickley. Four. Frank Alimo. Four. John Petronella. Four. And Richard Suzak is four. All in favor, none against. Congratulations, and sorry you had to come tonight. Well, that's okay. Thank you sir, very much. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Okay. Old business. I don't see any. I don't see Jenner Linda. Or uh, Jenner. Nope. Nope. Okay. New business. I don't see any. Nope. Other business. Let me flip the page. I don't see any. Uh, extension request, public hearing 2918, Zero King Street. Tell us a little bit about it, please. Uh, that would be the Metro Park North approval. Um, they took a, they had a, a long road of gaining approval from DEEP and the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, I believe they are working on getting their final plans into us, but in the meantime, they, uh, the time to uh, file the special permit and uh, pull a building permit has both expired. So they're just looking for an extension. Um, and I don't have the date in front of me. Uh, hold on. It's September 6th, 2023. Right. And I think when uh, when they wrote the letter, they had thought that just the, the request for the special permit had approved had expired. But um, I mean, I looked into it and also their their time to, to pull the building permit also has expired. So I, um, I would recommend um, extending both those deadlines, but um, it's up to the commission. Okay. Um, I knew this was gonna be a difficult property to get approved to begin with. And I'm glad they're um, making an effort to continue forward with it. So I'm okay with the extensions, both of them. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we allow um, the, we approve the extension of, I guess, public hearing 29180 King Street to, to allow the, the, a building permit and a special permit um, to be extended to September 6, 2023, as per the letter um, sent to our planning department dated March 10th, 2021. Second. Motion is made and seconded by Commissioner DeGray. Um, roll call. Ken Nelson. Four. Linda DeGray. Four. Mary, uh, Virginia Higley. <laughs> Four. Frank Alimo. Four. John Petronella. Four. And Richard Suzak is four. Great. All in favor, none against. Uh, thank you. Uh, moving on, public hearing 2942. Tell us a little bit, please. Mr. Chair, if I may, I'm, I'm going to recuse myself of this of uh, this uh, um, application, uh, 2942. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, John. Uh, Laura, again, go ahead. Oh, similar situation. Um, this one, they uh, have 
some, they submitted a similar um, letter and I looked into it and both deadlines are actually um, expired or are passed. And so they're looking for an extension. Again, I would recommend um, extending both the time to file the special permit on the land records and also pull, pull a building permit to, and <laughs> again, I don't, I don't have that letter right in front of me right now, but um, to that to the date in the letter, let me pull it up. I think it's yeah, November. The date letter says five years. Yep. Okay. Oh, five years. Okay. What property is this, Rich? This is the one um, that we, it, it's, it abuts, you know, the residential is, uh, I guess, development is directly behind them and they're right at, at the, you know, I, I, I think it's um, Freshwater, yeah, Freshwater Boulevard is right there and, and it, it intersects Elm Street and it's right at that intersection. By right. Town Fair Tire, right across from Town Fair Tire. Correct. It's to be okay. Palumbo Drive. Palumbo yep. Drive, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I could confuse that. Yep, okay. Commissioners, any questions or concerns? Yeah, you know, um, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Commissioner Alimo. So in the letter, it says they think we're going through the permit process with DLT for the road improvements. So I just want to be sure what we do tonight doesn't jeopardize their permitting process with DLT. It looks like they received it according to the letter in November 2020. So um, I just want to make sure that they're going to be able to keep those permits intact for their road extension. It looks like they had some difficulties with COVID, but well, I'm for I'm, I'm for doing the five. Depends on how we vote tonight. I'm sorry. That would depend on how the vote goes tonight. Oh, okay. I just was reading the letter that they sent in. Okay, right. thank you. Okay. Seeing no other comments, roll call, please. Ken Nelson. Four. Linda DeGray. Four. Virginia Higley. Four. Frank Limo. Four. John Petronella. He abstained. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Richard Suzak is four. Okay. All in favor, none against. And he didn't abstain. He recused himself. Right. Did I okay, get John. a? Uh, oh, sorry. Did I? Can I? Who uh, made the motion and seconded it? I, did I miss that? Well, yeah. Actually, yes. I think we we got interrupted. They, they didn't do I was it. ready to make the motion, and Frank Limo. Um, had had you know, I'll, I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the extend five year extension for public hearing 2942 147 Elm Street, the shops at Elm Street Square, um, as requested by Frank Alimo in his letter dated my, no, not my letter. Frank, 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 I'm, I'm looking at too many n names and numbers over here. It's like getting confused. Frank, too many F's and O's. Yeah. Um, you know, Second. Town of Enfield Planning did, Department. Did, did Frank Alimo second that? Yes. No. Oh, Linda did. I'm sorry. Linda yeah. did? Okay. Yeah. And you've already taken the vote. So. Okay. Motions made and seconded by Commissioner DeGray. The vote is unanimous. Okay, discussion items. Discussion regarding self-storage facilities. Um, this one was just a question that had come up. Um, we had, I wrote a memo, but there was um, some interest in the Burlington Coat Factory store um, that if the property straddles the town lines between East Windsor and Enfield, on the East Windsor side, the property is industrial in nature. On the Enfield side, it is business general. And nowhere in town um, do we specify what self-storage actually is as a use, but we do have interest um, from someone who would like to use that building for self-storage. and. Um, they were asking staff on how they could gain approval, and given the history of self-storage in Enfield, uh, I guess what we would be looking for is some sort of guidance from the commission. Um, we do have self-storage um, facilities in Enfield. Uh, I'm, I'm not really sure how they were approved, um, if, they were, if it was just considered a form of warehousing, um, in which case it would be uh, an approval, uh, a site plan approval in all industrial zones. Um, 
but this this zone is business general. So um, if we were if the commission were to be open to receiving an application for self storage as a form of warehousing, then the uh, the applicant would need to uh, seek a zone change. Um, but before we advise them on any of that, um, we really just wanted to get a sense of the commission on that use as to whether it would be allowed as a form of warehousing or if they would need to maybe amend the regulations to also allow self storage facilities. Well, I think because the building part of the building in East Windsor is industrial already and we have self storage in industrial, um, I would be OK um, changing the zone for the remainder of the building to industrial because I don't want to open a can of worms allowing self storage in business. That's where I'm at with this, but I would I would, I would, like I said, I'd be okay with industrial and I would be okay with them putting a self storage unit in that building due to the fact that half the building's already industrial. So, therefore, I don't see the spot zoning I see as making the building whole. Commissioners? You know, I, I, I would, I, I would agree with that. And, and, and as long as they, they don't flip flop and, and, you know, get another retail, you know, store in there in terms of they, they find out that, oh, you know, somebody else comes by and says, oh, you know, I'd, I'd like to put my store in there, just like the Burlington Coat Factory. And then all of a sudden, you know, we, we won't allow retail and industrial zones other than farmers markets. <laughs> 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 but but, you know, but, you know, it's one of those kind of things where, you know, it would be totally up to the, to, you know, to the owners as to what their expectations are, recognizing that, you know, it, they could backfire and they would have to come back and and have to get another, you know, zone change in, in order to, you know, put back something that they just had there if, if you know, the, the self storage didn't work out. I, I agree. It would be the applicant who would have to request the zone change. The town Correct. is not going to switch it. Correct. Right. I agree with you, Rich. Any other commissioners comments? You guys all agree with that? Yeah. Yep. Agreed. Okay. Agreed. I think you got consensus, Lori, that uh, we're open to it and he would have to switch his own to industrial. And I think the commission would be open to a self storage unit there. As a form of warehousing with a site plan review? Yes. Okay. I just wanted to clarify. <laughs> yep. Okay. All right. Moving on. Correspondence. Um, I don't have anything. Okay. Moving on. Oh, I mean, Lori, do you have anything? Uh, nope. Okay. Moving on. Commissioner's correspondence. Commissioners, anything? Nothing. Seeing none. Okay. Uh, Director of Development Services report. Uh, not a whole lot. I mean, we've been working on the TIF and updating it uh, due to um, the revaluation of the mall. So after, when we first um, adopted the TIF master plan, the original assessed value was higher than it ended up being after the court stipulated judgments with the mall. So we're in the process of decreasing that original value, which will actually increase the amount of money going into the TIF. So that's kind of pretty cool. Um, we have a Georgiana driver starting on Monday uh, to replace Savannah Nicole. So that's good. We've, she's been able to come on pretty quick. She's got a master's degree in GIS and uh, is very interested in urban planning. So she's very excited to come on board. And we're excited to have her come on board. As long as the town doesn't steal her to work on the town's GIS. <laughs> That would mean that they'd actually give us access to the data, so which is also an issue. So anyway, um, th those are two big things that are happening. But you know, we'll Great. community gardens and POCD and blah blah blah. Good. Great. Okay. Administrative uh, administrative I approval report. I have a question for Lori. I'm my hand Mr. up. Limo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Lori. Um, Last meeting I had asked you about correspondence 
um, or discussion with the mall owners relative to concept. And I look back at the meeting and you had answered saying that, I guess it was a little too early, but you were working with them on study, traffic study, as well as um, a new uh, plan of development. And yes, maybe, we, we will be. I mean, yeah, they're I, not I guess on maybe, board yet. I, I guess maybe I, maybe I didn't answer, I asked you the question correctly, or we were misunderstood. I was looking at more of that, asking you about if there's like dialogue between, I don't know, you or um, community development or some department within the town with them so we can understand better the concept um because that came up the word concept came up many many times when we were dealing with that car wash application i know i, I just feel that you know this should be like on the top of the agenda the top of things to do i know you have a lot to do and i think everybody in the whole community would it, would like to know what's going on there. I mean, that's, you know, like everybody's described it as our new center of town or new Thompsonville. So I guess that was my question to see if, if there was a, is there a department within the town, you know, communicating with them. So if somebody should come again before us with something else to do something on one of the 13 properties, I believe we would have a little bit of an idea of what the concept is to assist us in, approving or not approving so um we are development services i'm the director of development services so and i am in contact with namdar um they have not shared with us their master plan at this point um they've given us some ideas as to different directions that they're thinking of going in but until they get tenants that want to go into the places that they'd like to change um they they are not willing to discuss that with us oh so but but that's, that unfortunate. Is, that's unfortunate well it's, it's 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 part of their how they they work their business plan but um by uh inviting them into these workshops um i think that will help open up the dialogue okay that'd be great because you know i i heard you know with seeing different meetings that they were being a team player and they were cooperative with the town, you know, helping along with the farmer's market. And it seemed like there was a good relationship going on. So, we have a very good relationship, actually. Okay. We right. really do. It's just that they they have a very specific business plan as to how they operate. And they don't like to stray from that. Right. But, and understandably, it's all about, you yeah. know, uh, strategies and negotiations. I get it. Exactly. Just so long as that, you know, if something else comes before us, we'd have a little bit better of an idea because I know we all want to see it look pretty there. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. No problem. One of the biggest pr problems, Commissioner Alima, was confidentiality. When you get a larger company that's trying to negotiate a lease, um, they don't want the cat out of the bag until right. it's almost locked in, done. Um, for com competitors and stuff like that. So I understand part of it and I don't like being left in the dark either, but being in real estate, I do understand the confidentiality about it. Yeah, so. and you know, I understand too, coming out of the government sector all my life, I understand there's confidentiality and private discussions that have to go on. Okay, so thank, thank you. you. Thank you. All set, Lori? Yes. Thank you. Okay, uh, administrative approval report. Uh, we don't have anything for uh, this meeting. Okay, great. Well, not great, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, public hearing or applications to be received. So um, we are working with um, Pinellas, not Porcellos, Pinellas. <laughs> on getting their site plans um, to the to the I guess what they need to be submitting for the commission review um, so they're going to be coming forward once that's done uh, we do have another text amendment application um, uh, which I guess it's for limited office um, to allow daycares uh, child daycare facilities as part of the uses that are allowed in that overlay zone 
actually there is a property in town which it's not an overlay zone it's actually the entire property's zoning was changed to limited office so that seriously limits them to only the things listed the three or four uses listed in that uh, zoning designation so um, they would like to do something you know, or a child daycare on the property that they are looking to buy which is limited office so that's coming forward for the next meeting um, we also received today uh, 359 uh, hazard avenue um, their application for they, they had the zone change for hazardville for the plan design special permit and the uh, um, everything that that was required for uh, essentially rehabbing underutilized buildings that the commission just approved so they've applied and um, we received that today so we're going to be looking at looking at that tomorrow and hopefully that's on for the next meeting um, as well and that's all that comes to mind i know that popeyes was approved by wetlands um, okay. at the last meeting so they have not filed an application for planning and zoning just yet but we are looking forward to that. <laughs> and where where are they looking to go? Uh, it's one of those out parcels along Elm Street um, by the mall uh, in between Friendly's and Outback Station. Outback. Yeah. Oh, so it's the, the, the grassy area just to the west of Outback. Great. Good. Look forward to seeing them. Uh, what are the chances they'll be in for next meeting? We haven't received anything from them yet, so um, I, I Unlikely doubt it would be on. <laughs> yeah, the legal ad for the next meeting is due tomorrow, so. Okay, so it won't happen. Probably not, yeah. No. Okay, all right, great. Um, and just the text amendment, public hearing 2995, that's not also on the Pinella property, right? No, that's, that's no. separate. Separate, and I just wanna, um, make the commission aware that last meeting, um, I think Jen misspoke when she said the Purcello property and we all questioned what buildings on Purcello's to be torn down. And it's not the Purcello's property, it's the Pinella property. Um, I believe they wanna tear down several buildings, smaller buildings and um, possibly build one building to take the place and try to just organize the property a little better. So. I just wanted to be clear because I think we all questioned what was being torn down on uh, Purcellos. So, yeah. Okay. Um, opportunities and unresolved issues combining planning and zoning and inland wetlands. Uh, I have not heard anything yet. No. Okay. Um, that's it. Commissioners, all set. <coughs> Entertain I a motion. motion to adjourn. Motion's made. Is there a second? Second. I second. Motions made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you. You too. Good night. Thank you. Good night, Good night all. Good night. And Jenny thank, you. Or, thank you for the practice session with this.